Hello, my name is Aldona and welcome to my yoga channel which is all about becoming whole again through the practice of yoga. In every video I share with you a different technique. Sometimes it's a yoga posture, sometimes it's a breathing technique. I may eventuate into sharing more things like meditation and concentration practices. For now I'm focusing mostly on yoga postures and breathing techniques pranayama and today I'm going to be sharing with you a yoga posture called Anahatasana. This is one of the 20 poses which are very common in the practice of yin yoga in particular and yin yoga is a branch of hatha yoga which focuses on the yin aspect so you may have heard the concepts of yin and yang Yin being the receptive, passive, feminine, Yang being uh, more the masculine and active. So many styles of Hatha Yoga are very Yang, very active, very dynamic, such as for example Vinyasa Yoga, I love Vinyasa Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga, also love Ashtanga Yoga. Every yoga has a, you know, some, like, a great value. Now with living very active lives, in modern times where we're so busy and often tense, it's important to create more balance through yin practices. So there where yang practices use and use dynamism and target the muscles, yin yoga targets the deep tissue, the deep connective tissue in your body. So it doesn't target the muscles and the principles of yin yoga are like finding your edge, so there where you might be able to go into a full posture with like full power, let's say that you're in full power, you would actually consciously go a little bit less than that so that you're not forcing it. Then being still in the posture and holding the posture. And now instead of using like working against gravity as in some yoga postures you're standing and raising the arms in yin yoga you use gravity to bring you deeper into the posture so these are some of the principles of yin yoga and i personally like i've been practicing a lot of yang yoga practices and recently i've been tapping into some of the wisdom and the beauty of yin yoga which is why today I felt motivated to share a yin yoga posture with you. Anahatasana. So, anahata means unstruck in Sanskrit, and anahata chakra is also, it's the heart chakra. Asana is posture, so this can be referred to as the posture of the heart chakra in a way. This is because the way in which you position your body activates this energy center in your body. And in your being. In yin yoga we hold postures for a longer time so there where in more dynamic practices you might hold a posture for three to five breaths. In yin yoga you hold the posture for at least three to five minutes, sometimes even longer depending on the posture. So you can also in yin yoga use props to help you relax into the posture. Now what are some of the benefits of Anahatasana? It opens up the shoulders and the upper back, creating a gentle stretch in the arms, upper back, and it provides a kind of counter, well, it definitely provides a counter posture to the typical office posture, which we can often assume a little bit unconsciously in a way, if we're sitting behind a desk for a long time, then there's a tendency for the shoulders and the upper back to bend forward. So this posture is a great posture to do after a long day of working behind a desk because it opens up the upper back and the shoulders. Also because of the way you position your body, which I will briefly show, there is a subtle reversing of the, the organs so it can help digestion that being said, it's good to practice this posture on an empty stomach because you're kind of reversing, so you don't want to be with a full stomach. And mostly in yoga, it's best to practice on an empty stomach. Also, 
yin yoga works on the meridians that run along the connective tissue in your body. So this posture in particular runs through meridians or activate, stimulates meridians that uh, have to do with the urinary bladder, your spleen, your stomach, your heart, your lungs, and the small and the large intestine. So it really can be very healthy to practice this posture because it has deeper effects on the other organs while you're just actually relaxing in the posture. There's a lot of effects that are being created in your, in your body, especially if you practice it on the long term. Now on an energetic, emotional, mental level, this posture creates a very soothing feeling at the level of the heart chakra. And it can, when you stay in it for a while, it tends to release some blockages and there's this feeling of releasing some of the burdens of the heart. So this makes it emotionally and spiritually a very beautiful posture to practice. In yoga, it's actually known as the, the melting heart pose. So if you were to technically translate the, the name of the posture, Anahatasana, it's like Anahata, unstruck posture. So the posture of the unstruck, but Anahata refers to Anahata Chakra, as I've mentioned before. But in yoga classes, you'll often hear that this posture is called melting heart pose. This is because the way in which you are positioned, it's as if you're allowing your heart to melt towards the earth. And this is the effect that, this is what the pose feels like when you're in it, and also when you get out of it, the effects continues to, to linger. Now there's a few contraindications for this posture. So again, don't practice it on a full stomach. If you have a neck injury, a knee injury, back injury, don't perform this posture. Also, if you have had recent surgery in your thighs, in your back, in your neck, in your knees, don't perform this posture. Also, if you have severe knee pain, you, you are on your knees in this posture. So you can try placing a blanket under your knees, but if it's still painful, then it's best to just avoid this posture. Yes? So how to perform this posture? You would come on all fours in tabletop, so the wrists are each under the shoulder, and here the knees are directly under the hips. And from here, you would basically walk your hands forward, and here what is important is that you keep the legs at a 90 degree angle and not go back. So you keep them at 90 degrees angle from tabletop, and you begin to Walk your hands forward, stretch them, palms on the ground, resting your forehead on the mat, and just allow the heart to kind of melt into the earth. And you basically hold this posture for three to five minutes, focusing at the heart and just relax. So my, the soles of the feet are pointing up. I don't have them, the toes curled. I have the soles up. So once three to five minutes have passed, there's two ways you can get out of the posture. You can simply come back into child's pose. Just bringing your hips towards the heels. Or you can also, so let's see where we're here. You can also slide forward on your belly. So up to you, whatever is comfortable. I personally really enjoy going back into child's pose because I really enjoy that feeling of staying interiorized and not moving too much. So I'm still kind of in the in the energy of the posture. I love to have my eyes closed, really feeling the effects, focusing on the heart. Your breath is relaxed, so don't, don't intensify your breath while you're doing this posture. It's more like yin, so think just like relaxing, receptive, soft, empty your mind, slow breath, 
hard feelings, just very peaceful. I hope you enjoyed this posture. Thank you for tuning in to my yoga channel. If you like this video, please click like. Please let me know if you like this video. And see you next time. May you be well. May you be healthy. May you be happy. And may you be free. Namaste.